So good afternoon everyone, hope you all are doing well. Today we are going to discuss another inherited endocrine syndrome, a very important syndrome from exam perspective. And uh, every year there are at least one or two questions asked from this syndrome. Uh, all these syndromes which I'm doing, uh, I already did a video on MEN1 and even the syndrome now. All this will be indexed under the playlist of inherited endocrine syndrome on my YouTube channel. So you can have it for easy reference. So let's start it right away. So here we have a case, a 40 year old lady with a past medical history of breast cancer and now presents with a lump in the neck. She's clinically euthyroid and an examination has irregular nodules as well on the tongue. A 2.4 centimeters firm thyroid nodule is palpable on the left side of the thyroid, which is further confirmed by an ultrasound. Ultrasound further confirms it to be a TR5 grading, which is of course indicative of a possible malignancy. And also there is evidence of calcifications. There is no cervical lymph nodes palpable. What is the most likely etiology for this thyroid nodule? So clearly we have a lady who has got breast cancer, is now presented with a lump in the neck, and she's also having irregular nodules on the tongue on examination. So what is the most likely etiology for the thyroid nodule? So here are the options, micropapillary thyroid cancer, medullary, papillary, follicular, or anaplastic. Now, the answer for this question in context of what we're talking about is follicular thyroid cancer. Why follicular thyroid cancer? We'll see when we look at in detail about Cowden syndrome, the case uh, diagnosis, which we are talking about. So what is Cowden syndrome? Uh, it is an autosomal dominant condition in which there is an inactivating mutation in the P10 tumor suppressor gene, which is located on chromosome 10Q23. Extremely important statement for exam. So inactivating mutation of the P10 tumor suppressor gene. Uh, and it is autosomal dominant. The estimated prevalence of Cowden is one in 200,000. The condition is characterized by multiple hematomas involving the organ systems derived from all the germ cell layers. Patients are predominantly at an increased risk of breast, thyroid, and endometrial cancers. The easier way to remember this is BET. Of course, there are some other risks as well and other systemic manifestations as well which we are going to look at the next set of slides. But this is for mandatory for us to remember, increased incidence of breast, endocrine, endometrial, and thyroid cancers. So per se, from an endocrine exam perspective, what are the endocrine features of Cowden syndrome? Benign thyroid abnormalities, such as multinodular goiter, Hashimoto's lymphocytic thyroiditis, and adenomas are very common, and they are reported in up to 68% of the patients. The most frequently reported extra cutaneous manifestation of Cowden syndrome is actually this thyroid disease. And it occurs in over one half of the patients, as we saw around 68% of the patients. So the most common, most frequently reported extra cutaneous manifestation is benign thyroid abnormalities. In terms of cancer, what type of cancer is common in Cowden's in relation to thyroid? It is the non-medullary thyroid cancers. And that's why the answer to our question was follicular thyroid cancer. So follicular thyroid cancer is the most common thyroid cancer in context of cow. So the free view of this particular lecture has ended. Uh, for access to this full lecture session, please subscribe to my lecture series, which is total of 60 lectures till date. Uh, these uh, will be provided access to via paid subscription plan and uh, all the paid subscribers will be given a lifetime access to all my existing 60 videos lectures, which are already on the YouTube channel, plus all the upcoming new videos. So whatever lectures or sessions I'll be doing in coming weeks, months, and years, all of them will be uh, given access to in the same subscription plan. So for the full subscription details, please email me on mazirules at gmail.com or WhatsApp me on Zero zero nine seven one five five seven four three four seven nine four, and have the same number on the Telegram app as well. 
just to give a brief overview of the full lecture series. So it includes uh, different topics across diabetes and endocrinology. For diabetes itself is there are around 19 lectures which I've done across different topics which are useful for the exams as well as for the clinical endocrinology practice. In terms of uh, high yield topics for specialty exam and European board exam, there are around nine sessions which have covered all the previous exam recalls as well as all the high yield topics and themes which are frequently encountered in the uh, specialty exams and the European board exams. In terms of thyroid, apart from the thyroid cancer guidelines which were recently uh, published, plus there are other sessions on different topics uh, related to thyroid uh, across the spectrum of thyroid disease. In terms of adrenal as well, covering all the important topics or sessions which are frequently encountered in exams and in clinical practice. There are two very good sessions on lab endocrinology by Dr. Well Murugan, very helpful for those preparing for uh, DM endo or DNB endocrinology as well. In terms of pituitary also have covered all the important sessions on all the important topics which are frequently encountered in clinical practice and the exams. There are a few sessions on the inherited endocrine syndromes as well. Very important sessions on reproductive endocrinology about uh, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, gynecomastia, hirsutism, PCOS, diagnosis, evaluation, management. There is a uh, sessions on calcium and bone metabolism on familial lipid disorders and uh, sessions on pediatric endocrinology as well. So just to let you know that there are many more sessions coming up. And as I mentioned, that in the same subscription plan or same subscription fee, you will be provided access to all my existing 60 lectures plus all my forthcoming lectures. So thank you very much for subscribing. Thank you very much for supporting me.